Greetings, friends, and welcome back to Mike Allen from Chicagoland, broadcasting currently from the city of Chicago right here in the South Loop. Got an ambitious plan this morning, the day after Thanksgiving. I want to head and check out a bunch of houses that were uh, used as uh, exterior shots within um, movies and TV shows from my youth. Um, starting out here on the South uh, Loop, Van Buren Street, heading under the L right now. And we're gonna start off with a 1980 classic. So let's get started. State and Van Buren on the other side of the L is at uh, an old flop house hotel that was used in the Blues Brothers. Let's head over there. So the old hotel sat on the other side of this uh, bus that's pulling away here and it's currently a park. It was torn down in 1991 as the city tried to revitalize this area. The humble abode of one Elwood Blues according to John Candy. One of the things that director John Landis did was he paid the city of Chicago to run the L several times along this track here. That was when it was in the scene where Jake and Elwood are sitting up inside their um, room up here and Jake asked how many times does the train go by and Elwood would say so many times you won't even notice it. Yeah right here this is where it all took place right over in here and here's the angle just one block over on Plymouth Street which I'm assuming is why it was called the Plymouth Hotel as I mentioned before torn down in 1991. There's the L right there. It was not blown up by Carrie Fisher, as shown in the movie. Okay, moving on to the next stop. So as I mentioned in my intro, I plan to visit several movie home locations and a couple from TV shows as well. I'm really focusing on the stuff that I grew up on. Um, so I'm not gonna get everything. There was, there's been a lot filmed in the city of Chicago and its surrounding suburbs, but I'm really gonna focus on the stuff that I watched as a boy in the 80s and, and early 90s, and just wanted to share that here on uh, on YouTube. So on to the next stop. Heading north on the Kennedy Expressway now to visit a home that no longer exists, but always wanted to see the spot. So that's what we're gonna do. Yeah, I was quite disappointed to hear that the Family Matters house was torn down. Those of you that don't know, Family Matters was a hit TV show about a Chicago family back in the late 80s, early 90s, and this is where the house once stood. The building did, however, commemorate the show right here on its front. And the next door house is still standing, which is shown with the house during the exterior shots of Family Matters. Now, the first time I really started to feel my age when realizing that the pop culture I grew up with was definitely not really well known amongst the younger uh, younger generation was when I had to explain to my niece who Steve Urkel was. So if there's any young viewers out there, Google Steve Urkel and you'll get a, a history lesson in uh, late 80s, early 90s television. Drove over to the heart of uh, the Lincoln Park neighborhood now and sticking with the TV show theme, I'm gonna check out another famous uh, shot from a TV show that was on in the late 80s, early 90s, along with Family Matters on the TGIF lineup on ABC. So this building right here stood in as Larry and Balky's apartment in season three, all the way to the end of the show perfect strangers 
pretty cool seeing this. Watched that show a lot as a kid. Now for the first two seasons, the stand-in for Larry and Balky's apartment was the Santa Rosa Hotel in Los Angeles. That stood in as their Chicago apartment. But the Santa Rosa Hotel was uh, torn down. Only the first floor still remains to this day. And I think it, the change to this uh, location here coincided with the teardown of the Santa Rosa because it happened around the same time. This here, if I'm remembering correctly, was the shot that you would normally see whenever they needed to have established exterior shots. Obviously it was a little higher. I don't have a crane or a drone. Perfect Stranger is another TV show that a young audience probably wouldn't understand or remember as it was filmed several, several, several years ago. Featured uh, Larry Appleton, Wisconsin native, moves to Chicago, and his cousin Balky from the fictional country of Meatbos uh, comes to stay with him rather unexpectedly and the show is just basically the two of them having uh, one uh, issue after another much like uh, in the same sense as uh, Laurel and Hardy back in the day. Well we're gonna head on to the next uh, next location here done with TV shows for this uh, video it's gonna be movies from here on out let's head to the next one which isn't uh, too far from here. One of the things I would love to do for the channel someday is do the filming locations for the 1993 Harrison Ford thriller, The Fugitive. But right now I'm gonna just settle for one of those locations. And that here was the home of Dr. and Mrs. Richard Kimball's condo here in Lincoln Park, right here. Pretty sure this was the spot it was filmed at where Police officers were bringing Dr. Kimball out of his condo to take him in for questioning. It's one of the hosts on the uh, sports talk station here in Chicago. The guy's name is Mark Grody. He's on 670 The Score. He does a hilarious impression of Harrison Ford playing Richard Kimball. He'll uh, say things like, you find this man, or you yeah, switch the samples crack up every single time I hear that and every time I watch the movie I think of Mr. Grody doing his uh, Harrison Ford playing Dr. Kimball impressions. Anyway, let's move on to the next location. Beautiful Lakeshore Drive heading up to Wrigleyville for a very quick stop. At the corner of Waveland and Sheffield now right behind Wrigley Field and the Harry Carey statue. What I'm here to show you is this building right here which was featured as the exterior shot of Uncle Buck's apartment in the movie Uncle Buck. Here's a shot that you see in the movie. See the back end of the Wrigley Field and Buck's apartment. Yeah, and this place is also kitty corner from the Murphy's Bleachers. And it's right in front of the red line here. Now we're off to see another filming location from the movie Uncle Buck, but in order to do that, we have to leave the city and head to the nearby suburb of Evanston. Now Uncle Buck is a movie I've seen probably a thousand times and it is just so cool to actually be standing right here at the home of his brother and sister-in-law. Over here is where their daughter Tia walked in the house and the driveway where Buck pulled his uh, jalopy into. Now up until today I would have never guessed that this home was based here in Evanston. Evanston's pretty bustling community and this is such a quiet street. Didn't know any of that until today. And then these are the houses across the street. It was one of these where John Candy was ringing the doorbell of the wrong house. I think it was this white house here. It's actually been a while since I've seen the movie, so I'm not 100% sure. So writer, producer, director John Hughes, his movies are featured quite prominently here on the North Shore. 
Tragically, he died of a heart attack in 2009, but his movies live on in memory, Uncle Buck being one of them. We're gonna head to a few more of those locations. In the town of Kenilworth now, to visit another movie home from a John Hughes film. Keeping with the holiday theme, I guess you could say, as it is the day after Thanksgiving, and this movie surrounded Thanksgiving was Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Here's the street where John Candy and Steve Martin walked to get to Steve Martin's home right there. Yeah, so this is at the corner of Warwick and Oxford, where John Candy and Steve Martin walk down over to the house here. Planes, Trains, and Automobiles is another movie I would love to do the filming locations on. There's several in and around the Chicago area. In fact, I grew up near a few of them. But it is pretty cool to be standing here by the house. Now, a lot of times this house gets confused with the Home Alone house, but they are actually two very different homes. And we're gonna go see that one next. And behind me is the famous Home Alone house from the 1990 movie starring Macaulay Culkin. Now, John Hughes, I don't believe directed this movie, but I believe he was a writer and a producer, so he was involved in this film. And I gotta say, whoever did the scouting uh, locations for, for Hughes for these movies, could not have picked more beautiful areas. I mean, these are some really nice houses and some nice neighborhoods. And this, this Home Alone house is even more beautiful in person than it is on screen. Certainly want to be respectful of the homeowner. He's got security cameras and gates all over the place, but as long as we're standing on the public sidewalk, we should be okay. And one of the things I've noticed as I've been doing this uh, video is that the Neighbors and people walking around really don't care that you're filming because they're probably so used to it. I know there's probably been tons of people that have come by and filmed themselves or taken photos of these houses, especially this one. I remember when this movie came out, it was extremely popular and it's still popular to this day, especially around Christmas time, which for all intents and purposes started today, the day after Thanksgiving saw something posted the other day and I didn't even think of this until until I saw it posted but Joe Pesci was in Home Alone and Goodfellas in the same year. Okay we got one more John Hughes stop. Should add that in a lot of the filming locations I've been to today John Candy has been a big part of them from the Blues Brothers to Uncle Buck, Planes, Trains and Automobiles and even a uh, bit part in Home Alone. He was a heck of an actor one of my favorites tragically died of a heart attack in 1994. But like John Hughes, his legacy lives on as well. Now another John Hughes classic that was filmed here on the North Shore was Pretty in Pink, starring Molly Ringwald. I have not seen this movie, probably never will, so I will not be visiting uh, her house. But uh, it was uh, filmed here in and around these neighborhoods. I'm heading up to Highland Park to see one more filming location from a John Hughes movie. Crossed over into Lake County now in the town of Highland Park, Illinois, to visit uh, one more movie location from John Hughes. And that was the 1986 classic Ferris Bueller's Day Off. And we're gonna head over and check out the house that stood in as uh, Cameron's house. Cameron was Ferris Bueller's best friend. And it was a really unique looking home built on uh, stilts, it looked like. And we're actually gonna get a pretty good view of it because the uh, leaves have fallen here in the fall and we've got no trees to block our view. So let's go check it out. There's part of the home that was on stilts overlooking this ravine here. I think that was where Cameron let the car go down out the windows here fell down below. Pretty sure that's the place. I was looking online and this house has been renovated a few times. There's the house over there. It's undergone extensive renovations since the movie came out. We get a better view out of the glare of the sun. This is an absolutely beautiful property. Not a lot of privacy. Much of that home is closed in glass. There's a front view of the house. Looks like they got a lot of kids living here. And I read somewhere that this goes into an underground garage below the house. In case you were wondering, that Highland Park Strong is to commemorate the victims of the shooting in downtown Highland Park on the 4th of July this past year. 
So yeah, much of Ferris Bueller's day off was filmed in and around the Chicagoland area, but Ferris Bueller's house was actually filmed in uh, the Los Angeles area. It's one of my uh, bucket uh, list locations to visit someday is the, uh, a lot of the filming locations of famous movies in and around uh, Los Angeles and Ferris Bueller's house is one of them. Now this doesn't really have anything to do with the theme of this video, but I was in Highland Park and I just had to stop at the Michael Jordan estate. Here's the gate leading into it, number 23, to uh, signify his uh, jersey number. Now, you can't see the house from uh, this vantage point. You have to get a drone or go online and look at pictures. It's been on the market forever, so if anyone has uh, an eight-figure salary, they uh, could probably afford to buy it. I know I can't, but I don't think I'd want something uh, as big. It's a beautiful house, but... Uh, Compared to some of the other homes in this area, it's, as the British would say, quite ghastly. It doesn't really uh, fit in with uh, the rest of the neighborhood. It's, it's massive. He's got a regulation-sized basketball court in there. Uh, it's quite custom-built to his uh, tastes, which is probably why he's having such a hard time selling it. But anyway, we're just going to move on to the next uh, location. Got one more. One more to go. So I misspoke earlier in the video when I said I didn't have any more television show locations. I actually have one more, and it's from probably the second most politically incorrect TV show ever made behind All in the Family. I'm looking forward to getting over there and checking it out. And for our last stop, we're in Deerfield, Illinois, to see a famous television home from the hit sitcom Married with Children. And there it is. There's the Bundy house. So cool to finally be standing here in front of the Bundy house. Never, uh, never thought that day would come. I had no idea until recently that it was uh, an exterior location here in the Chicagoland area. So this is, this is really cool. Really cool to be standing here. And I actually recently watched a documentary about Married with Children and Sam Kinison and Roseanne Barr were originally supposed to be on the show as the uh, as the two leads. But I'm glad that didn't happen because I think that probably would have been a little more over the top with those two actors. I'm glad it turned out the way it did with uh, Catherine Sagal and uh, Ed O'Neill. So thank you very much for joining me on this uh, video today. It was fun to go look at these houses that I had been wanting to see for quite some time and being able to share it here on this YouTube platform. So if you wouldn't mind uh, hitting that like and subscribe button, I would greatly appreciate it. You can also check out other links uh, to help grow the channel. I'll put them down in the description below. Anyways, this is uh, Mike Allen from Chicagoland signing off from Deerfield, Illinois. I'll be back next week with another video, but until then, don't you go changing.